talk about. Not knowing about Bitcoin in 2014 is a lot like not knowing about the internet in 1994. What I have to talk about today can change everything that you know about money for the rest of your life. What are these Bitcoins that I speak of? Well, Bitcoin's essentially a digital electronic form of transferring money. It is a payment system that is open source to the public, it's distributed, it's decentralized. It allows people to send and receive money, pay for goods and services purely electronically. A little bit about me. My history, my passion, my hobbies were all centered around overclocking. Overclocking, something that you probably don't hear, is the art of taking a computer, whether it be a slow computer, or the fastest possible computer you can buy, and pushing it farther, making it faster. It's like hot rotting a car. So I'll take the best computer parts I can find, build the fastest computer I can, and I'll cool it down with liquid nitrogen, 320 degrees below zero, and I'll double, triple, quadruple the performance of that computer because it's just not fast enough for me. In 2009, I became aware of Bitcoins. I was reading about them, and I realized that they needed a lot of computer power. And I thought to myself, how cool would it be to take what I know and apply it to this Bitcoin and provide the fastest computer for Bitcoins and see what that can do? So I started with one system as a hobby and got it working, got it running, and had the software running on the computer. And I started to have these Bitcoins come in. I got my first Bitcoins coming in. And I said, wow, I mean, look, there's this thing on the screen and it says how many Bitcoins I have. And I was really excited about it. But that novelty started to wear off. I couldn't really do anything with them. So I came up with a goal. I said, why don't I figure out how to pay the power bill with these? And I set some goals. I put them in mind. I said, I want to pay off the utility bill that these computers use, and maybe I can start to pay off some of my living expenses. So I started to add more computers into what I call a farm. And that farm is a network of computers that work together to compute for this Bitcoin project. And in return, by me having these computers work together, I'm lending that processing power, and in return I'm getting Bitcoins. I started to realize that scaling was an issue. It started to take over my basement. It took over my hobby room. It took over my bedroom. I started moving computers everywhere, running cables all over the place, power cables, ethernet cables, here and there, tripping all over them. That's when I moved it to the garage. It literally took over the garage. Um, I had a, just an awful mess. And I started to clean it up and just put as many of them in there as I could, build specialized racks for them, had to rewire the entire power for my house. Um, at one particular point in time, I had about 250,000 individual processors working together. And to give you an example, the normal computer maybe has about eight processors, four processors in it. Your smartphone might have anywhere from one to four. Uh, <laughs> once it took over my garage, I had scaled it up to a point where I was able to pay off my living expenses. And that gave me somewhat of financial freedom, which was very exciting for me. It allowed me to focus more on learning and researching and understanding what Bitcoins was and helping individuals progress in the net Bitcoin network and write articles and guides and help people get into the Bitcoin community. Bitcoins may sound wonderful, but they're not perfect. There's a lot of drawbacks to them. There's very limited use. When I started out, I was just trying to figure out how to sell them to pay the power bill in the very beginning. It wasn't not easy. I literally had to get online, try and find people that were willing to purchase them from me. And as time progressed, more and more and more opportunities came up for Bitcoin as far as use. But even today, it's relatively limited. You can buy a lot of things, but you can't get everything as conveniently as a you know, cash dollar bill in your hand. There's a lot of volatility with Bitcoins. When I started out, they were fractions of a dollar. And they were fractions of a penny, and they fluctuated in between. They've gone all the way up to $1,300 and come down from there. So it definitely puts a lot of mistrust in them as far as holding the value of your money. If I were to buy something with Bitcoins, there's no chargebacks. There's no place I can go online, click a button, and just get a refund. I am um, at the mercy of the person that I purchased from. A personal experience I had was with hacking. Um, they are vulnerable to hacking in certain ways. 
And unfortunately, I had a situation where I stored my Bitcoins on a website and I put that trust in them and I lost a substantial amount of them. One definite drawback is when you do have a situation like hacking, it's going to be gone forever. You cannot get that charge back, you cannot get that refund, and they can be indefinitely destroyed. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. So you have to ask yourself, what is a Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is a form of a digital payment system, and it's really centered around the idea of a network. It's been modeled after the internet. And the way the internet works is it's completely decentralized. No one person controls it. And how that works is every single device that's connected to the internet is part of that web that gives its robustness. So we can have Bitcoins, and they are usable in the form of a wallet. It's how you send and receive them. It's how you pay for goods, and it's how you receive them for selling goods and services. You can have a local wallet on your smartphone. You can have it on your smartwatch if you wanted. You could have it on a laptop or a desktop or a tablet. You can have it on a website. You can have it in the cloud. So there's a lot of places you can take this wallet. You can even print it out on paper, which is very convenient. You can back it up with physical items. There are companies out there that print 3D coins that are essentially your Bitcoin wallet. And that's something that you can carry around with you and have that physical sense of security. And the key concept of Bitcoins is it's actually an open public ledger. So each one of these Bitcoins is actually in the cloud. And inside that cloud, all of the information about the network is accessible by anyone. So all of the Bitcoins in existence from the very beginning till now, where they've gone, who they've been traded to, who currently owns them, is all accessible. So no matter what, you can go anywhere and access an electronic device with the internet and be able to send and receive funds. What's really cool is with that wallet function being in the cloud, being able to carry it around with you, having it plugged into the internet, every transaction that happens is checked across all other systems in the network. So if someone were to give me a dollar bill and it was counterfeit, I put it in my wallet and I might go to the store and the store rips it up and says, sorry, that was a fake dollar bill, it didn't pass our test. I can't really get a refund from that. With Bitcoins, if someone were to pay me and those coins were basically like duplicated, counterfeit, or illegitimate in some way, it's going to check with the rest of the network and say, no, nope, before I even receive that payment, it's going to tell me that those were not confirmed. So I have an inherent sense of security with that. It's like a very smart wallet. <clears throat> we talked about how no one really controls Bitcoin. No one person does, but the people do. The people control it. The majority of the people who use Bitcoin, the 51% rule. So all of the users, all the people who contributed to it, um, they are the ones who make and determine the rules for how the network operates. It's very similar to how the internet works today. There are a growing number of people accepting Bitcoins. Today you can go to Amazon, you can shop on eBay, you can use PayPal to work in conjunction with Bitcoins. You can go to websites like Newegg, you can book a hotel room, you can purchase a car. In my hometown of Coeur d'Alene, you can purchase the largest piece of real estate on the market right now, an entire valley with lakefront property with just Bitcoins. In fact, they're only taking Bitcoins. They want a little over 20,000 Bitcoins for it. There's some reasons on why to take Bitcoins. And awesome thing about Bitcoins is you don't have a lot of middlemen. It's peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning it goes from the buyer to the seller. And that saves in percentage fees. I don't have to pay credit card fees. I don't have to pay merchant service fees. And in the long run, you don't have to pay wire transfer fees. You can get Bitcoins from mining, which is what I did in the very beginning, but it's not for everyone. It's very technical. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but almost any device out there is capable of doing it. However, even more convenient is being able to go to a website and just purchase them. You can go to a website and buy them. You can go to a website like localbitcoins.com and meet up with other Bitcoin users to purchase them, to sell them, to trade them for what you need. There's some definite upsides to Bitcoin, and one of them is security. Checks are a horrible, 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 horrible way of transferring money. If you give someone a check, you're giving them their routing and account number. That leaves you open to fraud. Somebody can steal your money, they can counterfeit checks, they can take the money out of your bank account, and there's really not a whole lot that you can do about it other than after the fact. It's really reactionary. Now, once your bank account gets drained, that's gonna cause you some problems. Sure, maybe 30 days later you can sort it out with your bank and get your money back. But 
With Bitcoin, you don't have to worry about that. There's a high level of security. If you choose to put your wallet in a safe place, the level of encryption that protects your money is far greater than credit cards or debit cards. There is a large economic impact that Bitcoin has on the world. Fundamentally, Bitcoin changes everything when it comes to money. It's no longer controlled by a central bank or a single governing body like the Federal Reserve. They are finite in their supply. They are limited to 21 million Bitcoins, meaning that they cannot be artificially created to devalue the money that you have. Currently, the way our monetary system works is we will create money as needed, but that does lower the purchasing power of every dollar in your wallet that you have now. For example, if you had a dollar in your wallet in 1913, and you carried that dollar with you till today, you would have about 3% left of purchasing power. That dollar does not hold the same values when you first received it. Bitcoins has the possibility to introduce nearly 3 billion people into the global banking system. There are a lot of people out there that just don't have a proper connection to the banking system. It's very fragmented. And this can help fix local economies. This can help fix state economies. It can fix trade deficits for countries. Most importantly, it's going to help the overall well-being of individuals who are experiencing hardships. <clears throat> Throughout time, there have been a lot of currencies. We've had gold, silver, paper money. Now we have checks, credit cards, debit cards. The idea of currency is essentially that I will accept this form of currency for a good or a service because I believe that I will hand it to somebody else and they will accept it for a good or service as well. Really, the only difference between Bitcoins and the dollar is that the full faith and credit of the United States government backs a dollar or that you believe that if you receive that dollar, you can give it to somebody else and they will accept it. Currencies are not foolproof. There are many times where an entire country defaults and that definitely puts their citizens in a bad position. We have runs on the banks, we have the Great Depression, we have stagflation and hyperinflation. These are all because the money supply was overexpanded. That value of the dollar eventually became worthless. Bitcoins, because it's limited, means that we don't have to worry about those. Those are a form of security for the users. It's actually deflationary by nature, meaning that over time, it will become worth more money or your purchasing power will be retained, if not in greater. What will the next mainline form of currency be? Well, Bitcoins would be my preference for that. I hope that sometime in the future, we will see where Bitcoin shatters all borders and all politics. And it is the new currency. It is a global currency that allows everybody to interact on multitudes of levels. Bitcoins is definitely not going to be the only currency of the future. It is just the beginning. It's literally just the tip of the iceberg. We finally have a currency that complements what we have today, the internet, technology, information. It is officially a digital currency for an internet age. If you would like to know more about Bitcoins, I recommend you visit bitcointalk.org. Thank you.